a good uh, so topic of this uh, discussion is of central tendency descriptive measures uh, how many descriptive measures are there in your descriptive statistics then we will our main focus in this session will be on the measures of central tendency out of all the other measures then we will uh, learn about concept and definition of, of measures of central tendency and about mean median and mod and uses of uh, different measures of central tendency okay so when advantages and disadvantages of different measures of central tendency objectives of our uh, session are to understand the concept of central tendency to learn how to calculate mean median and mod of the group data as well as the group data we have first start with the descriptive statistics uh, so descriptive statistics uh, is one classification of these statistics so there are basically two main classifications of statistics one is descriptive statistics another one is inferential statistics so your descriptive statistics covers uh, or include collection uh, organization uh, presentation and summarization of the data presentation of the data in the form of charts graphs and summarization in the form of measures of central tendency measures of uh, shape and measures of dispersion so there are three measures of uh, three measures in descriptive statistics so there are three descriptive measures and our main focus in this session is measures of central tendency so what are the measures of central tendency so data in nature has tendency to cluster around a central value right for example if you uh, if you as if you look at the scores of students in a particular class then you will find that most of the students do have numbers that is closer to the average the average of the um, class and there will be very few students who have got the numbers that are either very good or very poor means there will be very there will be relatively small or very small number of students very small amount of students that have the values at extreme most of the students will have number that is closer to the average value or average marks so your data naturally tends to cluster around us that central value condenses the large mass of data into a single representative figure right what does that uh, send value do uh, it condenses all of your data set to a single representative figure so by using the central value instead of all of the data set if we just use the central value then we can give a little idea about our data set so it will be representative of a data set so the central value can be obtained from sample values so when our central values are obtained from the sample values uh, then the sample values are known as statistics and then it is uh, uh, collected or obtained uh, through through the population observations then these uh, values are known as parameters so mean median mod etc when we are obtaining from sample data sample values then these are known as statistics but when we are calculating these 
say mean median and mod from the population da data then these are known as parameters so definition of the central tendency measures of cent central tendency would be a measure of central tendency is a typical value around which other figure figures can congregate similar to the example that i have already given of the class or uh, performance of the class in a particular test right so all the data points uh, generally uh, try to cluster or tends to cluster near silver every then and with the page is the value it is an attempt to find a single figure to describe the group of the figures why do we use center value what is its use because it describes the whole of your data set by simply that one particular parameter of that that one particular figure so there are different types of uh, uh, measures of central tendency first one is mathematical average which will contain arithmetic mean or simply the mean as we know it in the statistics and geometric mean and harmonic means these are mathematical observation and number then comes the positional average so this average does not depend upon the uh, magnitude of particular observation but it rather depend upon the position relative position in data set relative position in the data set they are both median and mod okay so they are also known as positional average so mean median and mods are the most commonly used measures of central tendency in health science or any other branch so these mean median mode are the most common um, measures of central tendencies that you will know what should be the characteristics of an ideal uh, measures of central tendency it should be rigidly defined so that persons uh, different person may not interpret it differently uh, so it must be digitally defined so, or in other words it must it must come from a particular uh, well defined uh, everybody across will get an idea what you are talking about there, there would be no mismatch or there will be no miscommunication when we are talking or we are when we are saying the term mean median or mod because they are uh, obtained from a standardized and a robust form it should be easy to understand and easy to calculate it should be based on all the observations of the data it should be easily subjected to further mathematical treatment it should be least affected by sampling fluctuations it should not be unduly affected by extreme values right so there are measures of central tendency also have different parameters so all parameters uh, all these parameters have different sensitivity towards the outliers or the extreme values so mean is relatively sensitive to outliers as compared to media so for the soft skewed data okay mean is more sensitive uh, uh, towards the outlier and it can give you some false characterization of the data set the characteristics of mean The most representative figure for the entire mass of data yeah this is the most commonly known measure of central tendency and it is the most uh, well known and most representative figure for the entire mass of data so if you want to uh, convey 
the average or the performance of a per, of a class in a particular test okay then in one word or in single figure how can you describe the performance by using the average of the class by mean of class so it is the most representative of the higher mass it the point out uh, which items have density plus unduly affected that it is more sensitive towards the outlier as compared to the median so therefore when there is a skewed distribution of the data and if there are outliers we will use median instead of mean because mean gets easily affected the posi positive deviations must balance the negative deviations the sum of the deviations of individual values of observation from the mean will always add up to zero the sum of squares of deviation about the mean is minimum so it is important point that sum of the squares of the deviations about the mean is minimum what is the deviation about the mean it is the difference between the value of a particular of, or value of particular measurement or observation uh, and the mean so it is the difference between the uh, particular observation or value and the mean that is the deviation so how do we get arithmetic mean or simply the mean arithmetic mean is obtained by step all the observations and dividing them by the number of observations or number of data point in your data set so let us for example take this case where you have been given data having data points x1 x2 x3 x4 up to xn so there are a number of data points so total number of observation or data points here is n what would be the mean then it would be summation of all the observations of data point divided by the number of a observation okay so let us see by an actual example so find the mean size of typically in test of 10 boys measured in millisecond millimeters 3 5 7 7 8 8 9 10 11 12 so how would you find out the mean you will simply add up all these observation and divide the uh, divide the sum by the number of observation there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 9 10 observations so that is why you divide it by 10 so 80 is the sum of the observation and 10 is the number of observation so when you divide it is giving you 8 mm so this is the average so when we get discrete frequency distribution okay so when instead of uh, given data for uh, given data for every mm, every single time for every single value frequency distribution there are frequency distribution for that no value will be repeated twice in this table and uh, how the times in which the times which uh, the particular value are observed uh, uh, represented or that is uh, denoted in a separate column known as the frequency column so your frequency is the number of occurrences of a particular value right yeah so when that is the case when we are given a uh, data set in the frequency uh, distribution table form then there will be slight modification in the formula of mean so instead of just uh, summing x1 x2 you will sum the product xi fi or x1 f1 plus x2 f2 plus x3 f3 x is the 
uh, a particular value of the observation and f is the number of time that observation is uh, repeated in the data set okay and divided by f1 plus f2 plus f3 or summation of the frequency column because this summation of the frequency will give you the total number of observation okay so basically the concept of the formula is the same that in the numerator you uh, you do have num uh, some of the observations some of the values of the observation and do, and in the denominator you get number of the observation so it is the same let us see with an example find mean days of confinement after delivery in following series so here days of confinement that are being represented by variable x so here 6 7 8 9 10 so as you can see no value is being repeated more than once in this type of column but this uh, these number of days are or this observation particular value of observation is being repeated uh, more than once so uh, the number of times that particular value is being repeated it is uh, being it, it is being shown in the next column that is the number of patient or frequency column so there are five patients who have got uh, days of six days of confinement right there are four number of patients who have got seven days of confinement so total number of patients would be the summation of uh, frequency column total days of confinement of each group you just multiply f into x so you will get the third column f f plus x column so its summation is or sum of this column is 137 therefore mean days of the confinement would be uh, 137 that is total days of confinement of each group divided by 18 that is the summation of frequency column or, or number of observation total number of observations so let's clear it with an example uh, let m1 m2 so on up to mn be the midpoints of the class and f1 f2 up to fn be the corresponding frequency so direct method is the formula the same as before summation of f into m summation of product of m into m f is the frequency m is the uh, data point or midpoint uh, midpoint in case of grouped data okay here we are not getting discrete value discrete data here we are getting grouped value or class interval so instead of x we now got m m is the midpoint of that class or interval other than that formula is the same so where m i is referring to the midpoint of ith class f i frequency of the ith class and summation of the frequency is equal to n or the total number of observations so shortcut method would be a plus sigma f d by n a is assumed mean this method uh, is known as step deviation method you are you so where a is assumed mean and d i is the deviation from the assumed mean that is m i uh, midpoint of particular interval or class minus a assumed mean so see in this example uh, calculate overall fatality rate in smallpox from the age wise fatality rate given below so age given in years is is having four classes 0 to 1 2 to 4 5 to 9 and above 9 number of cases of this small box in this age group is in the age group of 0 to 1 is 150 and in the age group 2 to 4 it is 304 
and in the age group 5 to 9 there are 421 cases and above 9 there are 170 cases and fatality rate is also given 35.33 for the first class 21.38 for the second class and 16.86 for the third class and 14.17 for the fourth class So, what we have to calculate, we have to calculate the overall fertility rate in smallpox from age-wise fertility rate given below. Here we have got age-wise fertility rate, but we have to find out overall fertility rate. So, means we have to take the average, so mean fertility rate is the, same, the formula for average that is fx divided by uh, sigma f. So, sigma fx as you can see from the uh, table below summation of the column sigma uh, summation of the column fx is uh, 21305 divided by sigma f sigma f is the sigma f is the total number of observations Okay, so when you solve it, you get 20.39. So let us create this with an example. Find the mean weight of 470 infants born in hospital in one year from the following table. So data is given in the table form. So in the first row, we have weight in kg having uh, six classes uh, one two three four five six yeah six classes then in the second row we have the number of infants that have this much weight so but we have to find find the mean weight of 470 children born in hospital so the so these total number of these infants are 470 we have to find out the average weight of the mean weight so what is the formula formula is sigma fx divided by sigma f we have to construct a table that got the column of fx so yeah but the data given here is in the interval form so we have to take the mid value so a column of mid value would be drawn and mid mid value of the column would be recorded there and deviation is equal to mean value minus the assumed value not mean value but uh, observation minus the uh, assumed value that is your deviation right so uh, here they have uh, assumed the mean what have they assumed the mean to be 3.2 right 3.2 is their assumed mean Mm. Uh, yeah so what would be the uh, deviation deviation or the assumed deviation it is mi minus a assumed mean is assumed mean is uh, 3.2 i think yeah 3.2 assumed mean is 3.2 and mi is uh, mi is representing each individual uh, observational value for the first row deviation would be 2.2 uh, .2 minus 3.2 so it is giving you minus 1 for the second row it is giving 2.7 minus 3.2 so it is its answer is minus 0.5 and so on so we have now got the deviation uh, we have to draw another column for frequency then frequency into deviation like fx here we are uh, using fd in instead of the x so here mean weight is uh, w plus sigma fx divided by uh, sigma f where w is your assumed mean and sigma fx by sigma f is the correction here right this is the formula for mean but it is acting as a correction in case of a uh, assumed mean so your mean weight come out to be uh, assumed mean is your 3.2 uh, 
and uh, summation of fx column but here f uh, but here summation of fd column is 39 divided by the total number of observation that is the summation of frequency column that is the 470 so the mean weight comes out to be 3.28 kg so close to the assumed mean that was 3.2 Now let us uh, see another example using the step deviation method and in this case the interval that are given are also not continuous interval or these are inclusive interval. So the question is calculation of the mean from the frequency distribution of weights of 265 male student at the university. <laughs> so let us um, see another example for this uh, mean and using step deviation method so the uh, question is calculation of the mean from a frequency distribution of weights of 265 male students at the university of washington that we have to calculate right so total number of observation or total number of data points are 265 male students uh, so the data is given in the table as you can see but data is given in interval form and the intervals are uh, inclusive means they are not continuous because there's a gap between 99 and 100 and 109 and 110 so there's a gap between the the upper limit of the previous interval and the lower limit of the uh, next interval so if any value falls in between that then we we where do we put that value so we have to first uh, convert this include uh, this inclusive interval to exclusive interval or to the continuous interval so we will take out the difference between the upper limit of upper limit of the next class and the lower limit of the uh, uh, previous class and take the average of the distance okay so here that the difference so that average is 0 0.5 here 100 minus 99 divided by 2 so it is 0 0.5 so you will uh, subtract this 0 0.5 from the lower limit of each class and add, add it to the upper limit of each class so you will get new uh, class size or new interval and then on the frequency column we are given the number of male students that are falling in a particular class a particular interval then the deviation it's it is calculated by the formula uh, x minus a divided by h x is the um, x here is the uh, mean of the mean of the interval and a is the assumed mean and h is the size of the interval here okay so yeah that's how the deviations are being made so assumed mean here is 66 uh, not 66 but uh, 145 145 so for the first interval uh, midpoint of the first interval is going to be 95 so uh, deviation would be uh, 145 minus 95 that is 40 divided by uh, sorry that is 50 uh, 145 minus 95 that is 50 divided by h interval what is the size inter what is the size of the uh, individual in individual interval or class it is 10 so divide it by 10 it will give you minus 5 similarly you will find out the d for all the other intervals also and then because our formula required fd so we will uh, create another column fd which uh, contain a value that we get by multiplying value in the 
F and column D respectively. And the summation of F D is 99. Summation of F or the total number of observations here is 265. So you can just uh, substitute the value in the formula and you get the answer or the mean that comes out to be 148.74 the merits and uses of mean so what are merits of mean it can be easily calculated uh, so the mean is easy to calculate this uh, uh, this parameter or this statistics or this measure of central tendency is the most easiest to calculate its calculation is based on the on all the observations it is easy to understand it is rigidly defined by mathematical formula right so there is no arbitrary a or random selection of the of the mean we get it by using a solid formula so it is a, it is it is rigidly defined and it is least affected by sampling fluctuations it is the best measures to compare to our more series of data it does not depend upon any position like your uh, median and mod does so then the merits of mean so it may not be represented in actual data so it is theoretical yeah uh, it is affected by extreme values whereas mean is the median is less affected by extreme values or the outliers so when you get a skewed data set or data where you have outliers outliers then there is uh, advisable to use median instead of mean because it gets easily uh, affected by the outliers it cannot be calculated if all the observations are not known yes it cannot be used for qualitative data and it may lead to fallacious conditions in the absence of original observation so these are the demands of mean and why do why do we use mean it is extremely useful in many research areas or many research uh, statistics used in many research areas like medical statistics, business statistics, geoinformatics statistics, any other type of statistics that you um, that you see, it is extremely used in all those statistics. Then it estimates are always obtained by estimates are always obtained by mean. Yeah. Then comes our next portion, median. Next uh, measure of central tendency is median. So median is defined as the middle most or the central value of the variable in a set of observations then the observations are arranged either in ascending or descending order of their magnitude right so your median is positional uh, measure I mean, it depends upon the position of uh, position of that particular observation in the data set rather than the magnitude so it is not affected by the magnitude but rather the position so first step would be to calculate uh, first step in calculating the median would be to arrange your data set in ascending order or descending order then uh, find out the middle position middle position and after that the value of value at that middle position will be your median right so that's why it's not very much affected by the uh, outliers because it does not depend upon the magnitude of the observation rather it depends upon the position in the data set it divides the series into two equal parts it yeah because we are because median literally means value at the middle position so it divides your data set into two equal parts Half of the observation will be uh, above it, and half of the observations will have value below it. Okay, it divides the series into equal part, whereas the mean is the calculated average. Yeah. Statistics of a median, the positional value of the variable 
which divides the distribution into equal parts that is the median is the value that divides the set of observation into two equal halves so that's one half of observation observations are less than or equal to it and other halves are greater than or equal to it extreme items do not affect median and is specially used useful in open angle frequencies so it is not that much affected so it is not affected by outliers as already suggested for discrete data mean and will not change the fall uh, the measurements are multiplied by the same positive number why because it is as already discussed it does not depend upon the magnitude of the observation okay it rather depends upon the position right so even if you increase the uh, magnitude of all the observation uh, observation uh, answer or the mean that comes out to be 148.74 Now comes the merits, demerits, and uses of mean. So, what are merits of mean? It can be easily calculated. Uh, so, mean is easy to calculate this uh, uh, this parameter or this statistics of this measure of central tendency is the most easiest to calculate. Its calculation is based on the on all the observations. It is easy to understand. It is rigidly defined by mathematical formula, right? So there is no arbitrary a, or random selection of the of the mean. We get it by using a solid formula. So it is a, it is it is rigidly defined, and it is least affected by sampling fluctuations. It is the best measures to compare to our more series of data. It does not depend upon any position like your uh, median and mode does. Then the merits of mean. So it may not be represented in actual data. So it is theoretical. Yeah. Uh, it is affected by extreme values, whereas mean is the median is less affected by extreme values or the outliers. So when you get a skewed data set or data where you have outliers outliers then there is uh, advisable to use median instead of mean because it gets easily uh, affected by the outliers it cannot be calculated if all the observations are not known yes it cannot be used for qualitative data and it may lead to fallacious conditions in the of original observation so these are the demands of mean and why do why do we use mean it is extremely useful in many research areas or many research uh, statistics used in many research areas like medical statistics business statistics geoinformatics statistics any other type of statistics that you um, that you see it is extremely used in all those statistics then it estimates are always obtained by estimates are always obtained by me yeah then comes our next portion median next uh, measure of central tendency is median so median is defined as the middle most or the central value of the variable in a set of observation then the observations are arranged either in ascending or descending order of their magnitude. Right? So your median is positional uh, measure. It, it depends upon the position of uh, position of that particular observation in the data set rather than the magnitude. So it is not affected by the magnitude, but rather the position. So first step would be to calculate uh, first step in calculating the median would be to arrange your data set in ascending order or descending order then uh, find out the middle position middle position and 
after that the value of value at that middle position will be your median and right? so that's why it's not very much affected by the uh, outliers because it does not depend upon the magnitude of the observation rather it depends upon the position in the data set it divides the series into two equal parts it yeah because we are because median literally means value at the middle position so it divides your data set into two equal parts half of the observation will be uh, above it and half of the observation will have value below it okay it divides the series into two equal part whereas the mean is the calculated average yeah. characteristics of a median proportional value of the variable which divides the distribution into equal parts that is the median is the value that divides the set of observations into two equal halves so that one half of observation observations are less than or equal to it and other halves are greater than or equal to it extreme items do not affect median and is especially use, useful in open and frequencies so it is not that much affected so it is not affected by outliers as already suggested for discrete data mean and they do not change the fall. Uh, the measurements are multiplied by the same positive number. Why? Because it is, as already discussed, it does not depend upon the magnitude of the observation. Okay, it rather depends upon the position, right? So even if you increase the uh, magnitude of all the observation. Uh, observation If all the measurements are multiplied by the same active number and the result divided by the same, in that case it, there will be no impact on both the mean and the median. Now we will look at the how to compute. Uh, how to compute a median how to load the median for individual data series where we where we have observations in the individual form not as a group form or as a frequency distribution form in that case arrange the values of x or x means variable arrange the values of observation or the variable in ascending or descending order when the number of observation n is odd, then there will be only one middle position, right? And the value of value at that middle position will be the median. So what would be that middle value? It would be uh, it would it can be found out by using the formula n plus one by two. N is the number of observation. So if you have got eleven observations in of in your data set then 11 plus 1 12 divided by 2 6 so sixth place would be the middle place and the value at that place would be your median but when n or the number of observations in your data set are even then there would be two middle positions and those two middle positions would be found um, those two middle positions would be one would be n by two another would be and by two plus one okay so the average of the value that those two models need would be the median in that case for example you see hours of seven subjects are three four five six four seven five find the median so what that was what is the and what we are arranging the data in some order now these are seven subjects uh, seven data points so it is ordinal so we will 
only have one middle position but but that middle position will be seven plus one divided by two that is eight by two so four uh, four yeah so what is the uh, number what is the value at the fourth position it is five so five is the median in this series okay and for group data series what you have to do so n by 2 is used as the rank of the median so instead of n plus 1 by 2 we are going to use n by 2 in when we have group data then the formula for calculating the median is will be given as median equal to l plus n by 2 minus cumulative frequency divided by f and multiply by interval size the size of the interval okay so here l is the lower limit of the median class that is the class in which the middle item of the distribution lies then cf is the community frequency of the class preceding the median class and f is the frequency of median class i is the interval size of the med median class so we will clear this with an example so let us go to the example state with the example so median for the group data or interval data so here we have data in interval which is using interval scale right and the question says uh, calculation of the median uh, we have to find out the uh, median of the data data represents rate of 265 million students at the university of washington okay so you have to find out the median so total uh, sum of the frequency is 265 because there are 265 students so total number of observation is 265 so the classes uh, the interval is given in the um, discontinuous form or uh, inclusive interval these are inclusive interval so first we have to uh, okay we can uh, also convert it into the uh, inclusive interval sorry exclusive interval form or continuous interval form as already discussed what it will do here so in the first interval in the first column of the table you are given class interval for the weight in the second column you have been given the frequency for the number of students falling in the which is recording the cumulative frequency what is cumulative frequency you you keep on adding the frequency of the previous classes up to that particular class that will give you the cumulative frequency so for the first class frequency is one cumulative frequency is also one for the second interval uh, frequency is one but the cumulative frequency will be one plus the frequency that are preceding that classes so one plus one uh, that is so the cumulative frequency for the second interval is two and for the third interval the frequency is nine the community frequency will be the summation of all the frequencies up to that interval summation of all the frequencies previous all the previous frequencies and the frequency of that interval so one plus one plus nine so eleven this is how you will uh, record one of the community frequency for all of the intervals so n is equal to 265 what would be the middle position here we have just discussed that for the group data middle position would be found out by using n by 2 instead of n plus 1 by 2 so n by 2 is 1265 uh, divided by 2 so it is 132.5 so middle position is 132.5 so where would that middle position be that middle position would be yes you see up to this interval this interval means 130 to 130 interval we have got 83 number of students okay up to this interval we have got 83 number of students we have to go at what position 132.5 so we have to go for that 
and in and at the end of this interval uh, 140 to 149 interval we have got total of 149 squares so this is more than our middle position so that means that our middle position 132.5 position is lying in this interval because up to this up to the end of this interval that is 139 uh, the total number of students that we have covered 183 to go to the 132.5 we have to move further to, and in this next interval 140 to 149 at the end of this interval we have covered 149 students so uh, 132.5 position or 132.5 student will be in this interval so this is the median interval so this is your median interval 140 minus 149 is your median interval and 66 is the frequency of this interval okay so now we will find out the median of the group data using the formula so L plus N by 2 minus CF, CF is the cumulative frequency of the uh, cumulative frequency of the uh, median interval divided by F, F is the frequency of median interval multiplied by I, I is the size of the interval. So L is the one, uh, 140, but was the L in the formula, L was the lower limit of the lower limit of the median interval. What, what is median interval here 140 to 149 so its lower limit is 140 so 140 plus n by 2 is the middle position so that is 132.5 cumulative frequency cumulative frequency of cumulative frequency up to the so cf is the cumulative frequency up to uh, cumulative frequency up to the previous interval okay up to the interval of 132 139 so this is the previous interval this is the previous interval of our median interval so cumulative frequency up to this point is 83 so cf is 83 and f is the frequency of your median interval so it is 66 so you just and i is 10 across the interval size is 10 so you now just put the these uh, or you substitute these values in this formula you will get your median mod is defined as the most frequently occurring measurement in a set of observations in case of discrete series quite often the mode can be determined by closely looking at the data so in case of discrete series you just have to look at the, the data and the value that you see appearing the most or the most frequent value will be your more simply. So, for example, look at this case quantity of glucose in milligram, percentage milligram in blood of 25 students are given. So total number of observations are 25 here. So which value is occurring the most here? Mm. Mm. I think 93. 93 is occurring two times. 95 is occurring three times. 96. I think 95 is the mode because it is occurring most number of times, three times. Then comes your 93. That is occurring two times. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100